Hello and welcome to the Apache Cassandra Corner, a community-driven podcast for all things Apache Cassandra. The Apache Cassandra Corner is sponsored by Datastax. I am your host, Aaron Pletz. Welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm here today with um, Lauren Sands Ramshaw. Lauren, did I say that right? Yep, yep. That's correct. Right? Lauren okay. Sands Ramshaw. Excellent. Excellent. Thank yeah. <laughs> um, can you maybe start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am a software engineer. I guess I um, first first coded uh, on my TI-83 plus calculator in, in high school, and it felt nice. like magic. Um, <laughs> and I uh, took a C class and, and, and loved that. So I majored in uh, CS in college. Uh, first job was was being a TA uh, and then tutoring mm -hmm. and then see full uh, uh, full time uh, Java dev uh, SQL. And then I, I spent a couple of years working as a security engineer at the NSA. Okay. Um, and then after that was a, a decade of open source and uh, starting startups, uh, consulting full stack, uh, mobile and, and web dev. And uh, writing a book on GraphQL. And then after oh, I finished the book, excellent. I uh, uh, spent a few months, uh, not a few months, maybe, maybe three months, I don't know, it was a long time, uh, applying to, to big check uh, full-time jobs. And right. uh, had a few offers, but was waiting on Google because their process is, was the longest by far. Um, and while I was doing that, I, I got a, 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 new, a newsletter from Swix, Sean Wang, uh, about uh, iPhone for system design. Mm -hmm. My my favorite part of the, the interview process for big tech was uh, the system design uh, questions, sure. uh, interview questions. Sure. And and this blog post sort of uh, explained temporal and and uh, pitched it as like this is the thing that solves a lot of your system design problems mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or distributed system problems in general. And and I, I was like, oh my god, I can use this as the answer to lots of my interview <laughs> questions. Uh, and it's it's so much uh, simpler and easier to to use. Um, and he offered me a consulting gig, uh, sort of uh, learning it and and explaining it, uh, improving like samples and stuff. And that was like sure. a, a dream job. So I so I did that, and then I wound up joining full time. Uh, I worked on uh, the the Node runtime, um, and now I'm switched to DevRel. Oh, excellent, excellent. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your book, um, the GraphQL Guide? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, I guess the the backstory of that was. Uh, I've been a long time DX enthusiast. I mm -hmm. was looking for, let's say I, I was coming from like, say, uh, in, in 2012 and 13, I was looking for something that was full stack JavaScript. I was coming from, uh, uh rails and Sinatra on the back end, and, and I loved Ruby okay. and I liked, okay. liked it more than JavaScript, but I was like, I have to be JavaScript on the front end. I don't want to rewrite code uh, twice. So I was like, I need something full stack JavaScript. I was looking at like Derby JS. I wound up, um, settling in 2014 on, on meteor JS, mm -hmm. uh, the full stack, uh, JavaScript, uh, framework. And that was like amazing, and it's still to this day probably the, the fastest way uh, to for, for, I, I, could, I could build a, a greenfield like um, mobile sure. or uh, web app. Um, so so I, I loved having a really fast, efficient developer experience, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I uh, came across GraphQL, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is a great improvement over REST. Uh, <laughs> and uh, whenever, but I guess back then, now now when I learn something new, I, I go straight to YouTube. But back then, yeah. I, I used to always buy the book. Um, and there wasn't a, a book that I liked about GraphQL out uh, at the gotcha. time that I was trying to learn it. Gotcha. Um, so I was like, huh, I, I I think this is a great thing. I think it's going to like improve developer experience for everyone in the world. And uh, I wanted people to, to know about it and, and be able to learn it uh, efficiently. So I was like, I, I could write a book. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I did. It, it took a bit longer than I thought it would. It was like a five-year project and <laughs> wow. almost nine, 900 pages. Mm. Um, Yikes. That's, that's a, so it's yeah, a, that's a yeah. ton. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a very big book. I don't think it could be printed. I think it's too long for print. But it's a, but it's an ebook and, and a website version. Um, sure. And, and yeah, I guess like I, it's the, I think the most, most comprehensive um, GraphQL uh, sing, single resource out there. And it, it it teaches like goes through the spec, uh, mm -hmm. teaching mm -hmm. you it, and then it goes through um, uh, f uh, different different front ends and uh, back end, uh, sort of a, a long tutorial style where it teaches each concept with with examples. Okay, oh, excellent, excellent. 
So now um, you're going to be joining us for our, our online virtual event called Cassandra Forward. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you're going to talk about? Sure. So uh, the, the title of the talk is Code That Can't Fail, backed by Cassandra. Uh, hey, so I, <laughs> yeah, so I start out uh, explaining what code that can't fail means, and that's basically mm -hmm. what Temporal provides is a, is a high level of reliability for your code. Um, and so I explain uh, durable execution, which is like the, the category that we're in, uh, mm -hmm. like it's, which is a, a new programming model. Um, and then I go on to uh, talk about so, some about how we uh, uh, implement durable execution um, internally mm -hmm. uh, using Cassandra, and then uh, a few Cassandra learnings. Okay, okay. So Lauren, um, what could you tell us about um, about durable execution? Sure. So it's a it's a new sort of model of programming in which you are programming at a higher level of abstraction where you don't have to be concerned with a number of different uh, distributed system concerns. Mm -hmm. um, and you can uh, and, and we can and I guess once you write a durable function, it, it is guaranteed to uh, complete no matter what happens. Um, okay. And that includes like uh, your process crashing, uh, your process being killed by the OS, maybe it's out of memory. Uh, the machine losing power, um, code redeploying, uh, and, and you need to like re restart, um, or uh, also transient failures. So uh, if you have a, a downstream service that's temporarily unavailable, or you're mm -hmm. um, like having having network issues, um, this sort of uh, takes care of all that for you uh, and automatically retries with special back off um, and does so um, re reliably and, and at high scale. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah, uh, and also like opens up some new possibilities like uh, sleeping for thirty days and that re reliably working. Um, uh, and you can also like send RPCs to your your durable functions oh, really? uh, to, to to give them instructions or or get back information. Mm -hmm. uh, you can mm -hmm. also have them run uh, an indefinitely long period of time, um, and uh, you can treat local variables as as durable or as persistent. Oh, okay. um, so so you you like have to write to the database less. Uh, mm -hmm. or, or not at all in some cases, because you can just uh, query your function for the value of that local variable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it, it's, it's something that I love that, that I think has been a, a huge uh, DX uh, step up for, for a lot of different companies, including uh, Stripe, Netflix, Box, Coinbase. Okay, okay. Um, had you worked with Cassandra much before this? Uh, no, I had learned a little bit for like, um, system design interview questions. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and I also didn't, I didn't use it, uh, when I was an engineer on the doing, working on the, the node runtime. Um, mm -hmm. so I, so I in interviewed one of our, our, our um, server engineers, uh, okay. Okay. To, to, to learn more about it. All right. All right. <laughs> was there, was there a, um, can, can you think of a time that, uh, you know, maybe you were you were working on something with Cassandra and you kind of ran into an issue with it. Just just curious how you uh, you know, what it was and, and how you worked your way past it. Yeah. So I, I can I can go through like uh one of the things from my talk is um uh there's there's an old like 2013 uh, blog post from uh data stacks on uh queues being an anti-pattern for oh, Cassandra. Right, uh, right. And, and we we have a number of of queues uh, in our system. <laughs> and uh so I, I basically went over the post and 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 shared the issue of um, uh, having having a lot of it, 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 taking a while to go through a lot of tombstones uh, after you've right. deleted right. things from the queue um, and uh, adding to the to the where clause so that you can uh, tell Cassandra where to start looking so that it's just not scanning them all. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so so what, what would you say your your experience was with? Cassandra, was it, you know, hey, this is, hey, this is great, or maybe, hey, this needs a lot of work, or, you know, um, I know, I know that um, developer friendliness is something that, that we've been working on to improve um, for, for quite a while. So I'm, I'm curious to know, um, you know, from a, from a newcomer, you know, what was your, you know, what was your perspective on that? Um, I guess, like, there were some, like, intro things that, that tripped me up with uh, terminology and, and mm -hmm. calling cells columns and, and uh, <laughs> tables, column families, and and things like that. Um, I found that the the data stacks glossary was was a great help. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
I, I guess more more generally, like the experience of of my company has been uh, really positive in that. Okay. Uh, it it is allowed us to to scale to a, to a higher write load than um, SQL, and uh, that's that's enabled us to to have a, a, a provide a high scale cloud service. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Lauren. So, um, if there's something that you could tell our our listeners that um, you know when they when they tune into Cassandra Ford. What could they expect to learn from your talk? Well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely give a more in-depth uh, explanation of what durable execution is with mm -hmm. some practical code examples. Um, and then uh, we'll see uh, how, how we implement that, like the system design of, of the temporal server internally. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Well, hey, Lauren, thank you so much for your time. I'm so glad to have you on the show. And um, I mean, I guess I'll see you in a week, huh? <laughs> yeah, look forward to it. All right. Hey, thanks, everyone. Goodbye. And that's all for today. Thank you for listening to the Apache Cassandra Corner. Apache Cassandra is a registered trademark of the Apache Software Foundation. Thank you and have a great day.